Hi, I'm Harold McAtee and today I'm giving another video on the subject of stocking density in aquaculture. In my last video I kind of gave a graphic representation to show you, you know, what the levels are for stocking density and how your stocking density is going to affect other variables within, within an aquaculture system. So today's video is going to be a personal story to give an example of when I had an issue with the stocking densities what issues it caused, how I recognized it, and what we ended up having to do about it. So I was working with tilapia in a recirculation system and there's a particular tank where I believe uh, I was removing fish out of other tanks some of the extras that uh, we didn't have room for just got thrown into this one tank. So we didn't have any real solid numbers on how many fish were in this tank but uh, just uh, started off trying to feed them with the normal feed program I had but uh, at a certain level, with uh, dissolved oxygen, if it gets too low, the fish will start feeding, start, yeah, will quit feeding completely. And also, we checked our DOs with the meter, and if the DO was too low, we would uh, take them off feed for the day. Sometimes I have to reduce feed, um, sometimes I have to skip it for another day after that. So, um, this particular tank, we didn't have the numbers on uh, number of fish. I noticed that uh, we had particularly low DOs, we had issues where the fish wouldn't finish their feed. We know, I noticed a lot of times the fish would come up and pipe into the surface, which is an indication of poor water quality, particularly low DO. And over time, the ammonia readings were coming out higher than they should have been. So, basically we had this tank where can't really feed it because anytime you feed it you're going to be wasting your feed if they don't finish it off and of course unfinished feed is going to cause more problems with your water quality like the ammonia and dissolved oxygen and you know I'm sitting there you can't throw feed in and whatever you do you're pretty much wasting your money on feed anyway you're already taking up all the space with these fish you got in there and with the recirculation system you're putting the water and you're putting the energy into it so it becomes huge expense and you're not getting the growth out of it that you want. You're getting high mortality out of it too. So all these different factors were caused by the overstocking of the tank. So you know, once April to the next, we can't really feed these fish, so it's stalled out about 80 grams, I believe. We usually move the fish out to larger tanks at 100 grams, but uh, as I noticed, the fish weren't. Uh, making any progress as far as their growth from one sample to the next they're still 80 grams so I finally said you know this is the priority to move out next um, maybe other fish we need to move out into large tanks but uh, these fish aren't growing we need to get them bigger tanks next time we have one open so when we did we ran the numbers on the fish as we were moving them out and of course it's about double what the fish should be in that tank so you may think that uh, putting more fish into a tank is going to cause you to get uh, more fish to processing sooner and in some cases it will but only up to a point. So in my last video I kind of went over some of the ways to figure out your stocking densities and something you kind of develop over time with experience. If you see they're having these kind of problems at a certain density you need to shoot a little bit lower and um, then you should get the progress that you're looking for as far as your growth and your survivorship and keeping your water quality in a safe range. So, yeah, then uh, after you figure out your guidelines as far as how many fish should be in a tank, you can make sure as you're stocking your tank that uh, you're keeping it uh, close to that number and uh, of course watching all the weight of the fish and running your numbers on that and paying real close attention to it and try to avoid at any time putting the extra ones in later because you know something doesn't some paperwork gets lost or some issue like that uh, then you end up with an overstock tank and can't really do anything about it other than moving them out again so um, that takes a lot of time as far as moving the fish out and then you gotta find more space for them and of course that all cuts in your profits as well so figure out your guidelines make sure you stick it to them initially and then uh, making sure you're keeping track of any moves that you have after that if you move a fish either in or out 
uh, keeping good track of that and just you know using good common sense as far as your stocking densities and um, keeping track of fish movements and so forth.